Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and the other day Apple released watchOS 26 Beta 1. watchOS 26 Beta 1 is available to developers and the public beta should be out in early July. This time around there's some good news as all devices that are currently supported by watchOS 11 are also supported by watchOS 26. So no watch technically loses compatibility, but they may not gain all the features. Now this came in at 2.6 gigabytes on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. This is the black titanium version. And along with this, Apple also released major updates with iOS 26 beta one, iPad OS 26 beta one, Mac OS 26 beta one, as well as TV OS 26 beta one, vision OS 26 beta one, and an AirPods beta update as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new is there's a few new features, but this is not as big of an update as iOS or iPad OS or any of those. So if we go into settings within settings, we'll scroll down, go to general, then about. And as you can see, the first build is 23R5280M. And this particular build, like I mentioned, is an early build. It should get much better and it is a little bit buggy, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Now you can see it has an all new design. This is the new pictures watch face that they've updated. And you can see that if I go back to the icons, we have sort of this glass or liquid glass look just like we do on the iPhone with the control center and more. So Apple has carried this across to all devices this year and made them more consistent. So for example, if I go back out, so you can see all the different apps here, there are some changes with things such as translation. There's some updates to some of the icons. And again, some of these could change before it releases to the public. But if we go back home, go to the control center, you can see the glass look. This is not as animated as I would have liked, but you can see what it looks like here. So you have the option to scroll through it just like normal. Of course, you can edit them, change them to whatever you'd like. And it just has that glass look to it or liquid glass. If we go back to the main watch face here, I have this set to rotate and you can see what it looks like there. You actually have to set it in the watch app. So if we go into the watch app here, give it a second to load, go to the face gallery down at the bottom. You can see it says the latest Apple watch faces. If we go into that, you can see photos and you can see the one that I have set here is some photos that are rotating or shuffling through different ones. And I'm using the dynamics sort of watch time here, but you can change this to whatever you'd like. You can also customize the font, the numerals, as well as the style photo color. And if we tap here, you can see if I switch back, it says glass. So that's the difference there. There's not really a whole lot of new watch faces. They have changed the overall watch face picker though on the watch itself. So if we press and hold, go over and then add a new watch face, you'll see we have the same sort of thing where it says new watch faces and browsing and discovering watch faces is in a redesigned gallery that's categorized this time. So you'll see health and fitness, photos, we have tool watch, data rich, as well as Apple watch ultra, bold, astronomy, colorful, clean, pride collection, dress watch, world scripts, Playful, Motion, Unity Collection, Digital Time, Analog Time, Nike Collection, and then you can go to all watch faces. Then you can scroll through like you could on the previous version. They've also removed five different watch faces as well. The Toy Story watch face, the Vapor watch face, Liquid Metal, Fire and Water, and the Gradient watch face. All of those are gone, so you'll see we have color, but if we scroll down to G, the Gradient watch face is missing. So whether or not they bring those back, we don't know, but they've changed that for now. Now something else new has to do with the smart stack. If I scroll up here on the digital crown, you'll see my smart stack here. Of course it has a slight redesign and this can be customizable this time around. So if we scroll down to the bottom, go to edit, we can then maybe add one. And this is a little bit slow and laggy at times, but if we go all the way to the bottom to weather, we can customize one. So maybe we want to go down to the bottom here and maybe use weather details. If we move over here, we can then select the details we want to see. So maybe air quality and then I guess wind. There we go. If we exit back out, we'll hit the little check mark there. And then we have our customized widget or smart stack widget. So that's something that's been updated. However, if I scroll through it, you'll see I created one before and they go underneath as I'll probably use this one on top, but you get the idea where you can customize these, whether it's workouts or maybe something such as activity, you can change that around. 
They've also updated the prediction algorithm. So based on what you do daily, for example, if maybe you're on your main watch face here and you go to the gym every morning and you start a workout regularly at a specific time, a workout hint will show up at the bottom of your watch and then you can just tap on it and it will bring you right into your workouts. The same thing is true in a remote location. This was an example given by Apple. So if you're without Wi-Fi or cellular, it can then give a hint that maybe you want to use backtrack to find your location where you started. So that's something that's been updated using the algorithm. Something else they've updated, probably the major thing has to do with workouts. If we go into workouts, we'll give it a second to load here and you'll see we have a new welcome screen. If we scroll down, it says welcome to workouts. They've changed the overall design of it. And as we scroll down, you can see we have something new called workout buddy. Now this is probably not on all Apple watches, but it says workout buddy helps you stay motivated with generative audio built with voice data from fitness plus trainers, get encouragement during your workout with a pep talk to kick things off highlights along the way and a summary. So it can give sort of encouragement. And if you want to enable that, you can, you don't have to use it, but if you want to use it, you can do that and then select a voice. So you'll see it's downloading voice one. We'll give it a moment to download and then we'll take a listen. So it says voice two is downloading. Let's go ahead and tap on voice one. Well, we'll go to voice two. We'll tap voice one. So you can hear the two different voices as far as the options we have. And then we can just tap done when we're done selecting it. And now you'll see the new interface. So they've made this a little bit easier. If maybe you're working out here, you can see, you can just press start the little play button there. And then we can go into our media on the left and we can auto play media this time. It can select music for you based on the type of workout you have and what you normally listen to. It can pick it for you, or you can choose the media yourself. And it will also suggest media based on podcasts or music you regularly listen to when maybe you're doing this workout. So maybe you're taking a walk, listening to maybe a podcast, it can suggest those for you, or again, it can completely select it for you. And then you can listen that way. Something else they've updated has to do with the workouts themselves. So we have a new workout view so we can see metrics, metrics two, we can include those heart rate zones segment and you'll see the other things here as well elevation so if you want all of those included you can then use them there if we scroll down here you'll see all of our different workouts so it's just got this nice little redesign and makes it a little bit easier to see if we go into notifications you can see those here as well where we have different alerts where it will tell us speed alerts heart rate cadence power and everything else so you can turn these on and off directly from the app and then the option in the upper right if we go to that you can see we have different things such as our custom workouts. So you can see our goals go into custom. And if you wanna create a custom workout, it's just a faster way to get into this that makes it a little bit easier to understand the overall layout. Now, another feature is the ability to use live listen on your iPhone and have a transcription sent from your iPhone to your Apple Watch so you can read what's being said at the same time. I haven't been able to find this yet. I looked through all the settings. I tried out live listen on the iPhone and so far I'm just not seeing it, but let me know if you've seen that yet, if you've tried it out. Now messages gets a few new things as well with live translation. So the same thing that you get on the iPhone with iOS 26 conversation backgrounds also carry across. So if we go into our messages, and you can see within messages, if I tap in the upper right here, scroll down, I have the option to auto translate. So you can translate in real time. If maybe someone's typing to you in Spanish, you want to read it in English, it can do that. So that's an update that's available. And then also background images, like I mentioned, however, I'm not seeing those just yet. I do have one set on my iPhone for the same conversation. So you can see it here, but I'm not seeing it on the Apple watch yet. And I don't see a separate way to set it just yet, but I do expect it to be added in the future. And it's supposed to sync across devices as well. Also, there's new suggestions based on maybe someone asking for your location. It can pop up and offer your location via find my or give different directions. So that's something under suggestions you'll see if someone's asking for that information. Also, when you're on a phone call, you should have the option to put it on hold and then have hold assist take over for you. So it says you'll be notified to pick up and then also live translation, of course. And then you can then manage unwanted calls from the watch also. 
So that's a new feature with spam filtering, and you should be able to manage those here. I'm not seeing those options yet, at least on the watch itself. But again, this is an early beta, so maybe they haven't added it yet. There's now some new options for notifications. One of the things it can do is adjust the volume of your incoming calls, notifications in Siri based on the ambient noise around you. So if you're in a quieter environment, maybe you're in a meeting or in a library, it can then pull the volume down as you're getting notifications or calls. You can of course turn this off in your settings. So if you go to settings and then you scroll down to sound and haptics, you'll see we have automatically adjust volume. And then you've got level default, and then we have quieter or louder. So you have those as new options. And then also there's a new gesture where you can flick something away if maybe you don't want to answer a call or see your smart stack. Again, that's under gestures in your settings. And you'll see that here as we scroll down, we have wrist flick. It says quickly turn your wrist over and back to dismiss anything and return to your watch face. So if you have this on your wrist, let's try it out. You should be able to, maybe you're in the smart stack here. So we'll go back in. We're in the smart stack. We should be able to flick it away and then it goes away just like that and gives me some haptic feedback that it went away. This will work with notifications, mute incoming calls and close the smart stack just like I showed you and also silence alarms or timers. They've also added a new option here or a new app rather. If we go into our apps, scroll down to the bottom, you may have already seen this, but we now have notes. So you'll see we have our notes app within here. It's syncing across all of the platforms. So from my Apple watch to my iPhone, Mac and iPad, and you can see your notes here. So you'll see vision OS 26 at WWDC, and you'll see some of my notes from that. So let me know if you'd like me to cover that in a separate video as well. As far as anything else new, well, that's pretty much it for watchOS 26. It's a fairly small update. And as far as the overall performance, it's been pretty good, but you may have already noticed some of the touch inputs are a little off. They're a little bit slow sometimes when going back and forth and just overall, sometimes a little odd. Sometimes it does feel a little sluggish, but again, it's beta one. And if you're having issues, make sure you report them in the feedback app. That's something that Apple uses. If you're using one of the betas, make sure you use the feedback app on your iPhone, report any issues you have so they can get that working this time and hopefully better than ever. When it comes to battery and battery health, well, I've left this off the charger all day long and we're at 45%. So battery life is not great overall so far on this beta. I wouldn't expect that for the first day, but if we go back here, let's see if we can go to battery, we'll scroll down to battery under battery. You'll see I'm at 45%, like I mentioned, and under battery health, I'm at 100% capacity still. The Apple Watches seem to hold up pretty well that way. If you're wondering if you should install watchOS 26, well, at this point, I probably wouldn't do that. If you need something stable, something you rely on, I would wait until the public betas or till the final release. And based on what we know already, most likely, if we go back here to our calendar, most likely we'll have beta two probably on the 23rd, a couple Mondays out from the initial release is pretty typical. So probably the week of the 22nd and we'll have it on the 23rd through the 25th. However, Apple hasn't given a specific time, but they have told us to expect a public release in the fall. Usually it's in September around the launch of the next iPhone. So that's what I would expect with all the updates with iOS 26 and everything else. Now, for those of you that may have seen the other watch face in the video, I wanted to go over that as many people ask me what this is. So if we press and hold, you can see it's modular. And if we go into edit the app in the center here, if we go into our complications, so the color I'm using is just multicolor and then complications. I have the app Lumi in the center. So that's an app that's actually paid for. I paid for myself. And then if we go back here, you'll see, we have the weather, we have our date, of course, the time there, and then our activity, the compass and messages. So that's how we set that up. And you can of course, customize that to your liking, but that's what I typically use. And so that's everything so far in watchOS 26. I do expect maybe some updates, maybe some refinements, and I really hope Apple makes this much more stable as we get closer to the final release. Let me know if you've found anything else though in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.